Are you still juggling emails with attachments or struggling to find that one document your team swears that they saved? Well, there is a better way. Hi, it's Chris from Skycom Solutions. If you're using Microsoft 365, you already have access to one of the most powerful collaboration tools out there, which is SharePoint. Here, I'll go over what SharePoint is, how you should be using it, and just frankly, some good hygiene practices uh, for SharePoint for your company. SharePoint is your company's file server. Think of it as a secure cloud-based hub where your team can store, share, and collaborate on files in real time. Uh, it integrates perfectly with Teams, Outlook, and the rest of your Microsoft apps, making collaboration generally seamless for the most part. Now, before you dive into SharePoint, there is something you should know. OneDrive does play a huge role. You do have to have OneDrive for Business installed. If you're not signed in and you don't have that set up yet, that's step one. After making sure that OneDrive is up and running, let's talk about SharePoint best hygiene practices. Okay, so now we're gonna just hop into a bit of a live demo here. I get asked a lot what the difference is between SharePoint and OneDrive. Again, OneDrive for business is where you're gonna store your, your local documents and just make sure that they are backed up to Microsoft's cloud servers. Um, that's just what they call your known folders, which is your documents, desktop, and pictures. Where SharePoint um, adds that organizational aspect where it's keeping all of every, everything in the company that you wanna actually share with your team. You can have to build out different sites and you can share data with everybody from there um, rather than sharing it from your own personal OneDrive. So here we're gonna jump into a little uh, test site that I have. Um, and then we're just going to go into our documents folder, which is uh, for a documents-based SharePoint site that's gonna host all of your files. Um, so here we've just got some test folders and some test files. And a lot of people do not like to actually open their files in a web browser using Microsoft's cloud-based apps. They prefer using the desktop applications, which is totally fair. So to do that, the easiest way is to sync this library with File Explorer. That way you can actually open all of these in your Word and Excel applications that you have installed locally. So here we are going to click on the sync button and it's going to prompt us that we need to open Microsoft OneDrive, which is why it was important that we were signed in and had that set up ahead of time because that will be utilized here. So we'll click yes and it's going to prompt us to log in and it is already logged in. So it skips by that page. So now when we hop over to our file explorer, now we see this SharePoint corporate icon, it's a little skyscraper. So that's important. That's going to uh, be the home of all your SharePoint documents, which differs from our local OneDrive here that has our documents, desktop pictures, etc. So it's in a completely, like navigationally, it's in a completely different spot. Um, so it keeps things separate, which is really nice. Okay, so in here, yeah, the sync has now started and we can see that by having a status symbol. Um, so again, a good hygiene practice is one, making sure you're actually signed into OneDrive. Uh, so if we go down into the system tray and we're getting the blue cloud, we can see that if we click on it, we're up to date. Um, your files are synced. We're not seeing any X's, um, which indicates that there is a conflict and it will show us how to resolve that conflict. Um, and it's not asking us to sign in. So that's, that's a good step one. Um, step two is understanding the status symbols. So as we go in here, we can see these are all clouds, um, which means that these documents live in the cloud right now. They're not downloaded to my computer whatsoever. Uh, basically, I'm just seeing file references um, that are being saved locally to all of these. So we'll see what happens when I open one up. So here I've opened a Word document. And now when I go back, we can see that the status symbol has changed to a white circle with a green check mark. Basically, this indicates that I have now opened that file up locally. It is now consuming space on my physical laptop hard drive um, because it's created a cache copy. So that is fine. Um, although, you know, the more you do that, the more it does build up and consume space on your hard drive. So every once in a while, uh, another practice that I recommend is just heading back up uh, to the root folder. Um, you can do it at a folder level or we can just go back up to documents and we're just gonna right click and we're gonna click free up space. And then we're gonna watch as that 
uh, green check has now switched to the sync pending, which is like the two arrows. Um, and then that should go back to a cloud icon. Now, one of the other icons uh, that you might see, and we're gonna generate this by choosing the option just for this single file, not for the entire library, always keep on this device. This I do not recommend doing for SharePoint. Um, I recommend this if you wanna do this for your own OneDrive, your personal documents folder, um, just to make sure that you have all of those files accessible when you're not online. You know, Maybe you go on vacation and you still wanna bring your, your work laptop for whatever reason and you want access to those files. However, keeping a SharePoint library offline uh, is never a good idea, really because you're gonna fall out of sync um, with your, your peers, um, as well as it's gonna consume a lot of space in your hard drive and probably fill it up as there's more room in the, in the cloud than there will be on your actual device. Uh, but for the demonstration of this, just to show you what that third status icon is, is a solid green circle with a white check mark. So it's the inverse of the previous status symbol that is saved to your device, taking up space and available offline. Okay, let's go back to that welcome to SharePoint uh, test document we have here. And let's talk about co-authoring really quickly. So the nice thing about SharePoint is uh, you and your team members can collaborate and work on the same documents at the same time um, using Microsoft's co-authoring. And as you can see here, um, up in the corner, it actually will show my little avatar picture or CS um, if, I, if I didn't have one, uh, which would just be my initials. And we can see that I, am, I have this file opened on another computer. Um, and then right now I'm on a, on a different account. So on my side, I would see the initials for this account who's logged in and has the file open as well. Um, so that's just to indicate that somebody is also actively working on this document at the same time as me. Another benefit of SharePoint um, is the fact that you really can access this, uh, this data from anywhere. Um, it's not on an on-premise file server that you need to VPN into the corporate network to use it. Um, with the exception of having some intra conditional access policies that might prevent you from this. Um, typically organizations have, have SharePoint where it is accessible um, from anywhere in the world. So you can, you know, you can bring this um, on your vacation up north and, and work on your laptop from there and, and open your files and you don't have to worry about having uh, connecting to a VPN and having a really fast internet connection, that kind of thing. Something else we should talk about is managing access. So again, if we go back to the SharePoint um, web GUI here, uh, if we go into one of the folders and let's say I'd like to restrict access to this folder um, just for uh, a particular security group or maybe just I wanna share a link with an individual, I'm just gonna right click. I'm gonna click manage access. And then here I can start sharing it with people or groups and I can see Okay, visitors can have read access to this, and we've got a designers group that can edit this file, um, and so on and so forth. So that is where you can actually share um, contents with internal or external members even, uh, depending on the security settings of the team site. So some people might say, well, I can just share access um, on OneDrive. So what do I need to worry about managing access on SharePoint? Well, OneDrive does allow you to share files uh, with multiple users and, and you can collaborate in real time that way as well. However, SharePoint is specifically built for this team collaboration. Um, it has several advantages over OneDrive. Uh, while OneDrive lets you share files, it's still ultimately designed for personal storage. If a team member leaves the company, their OneDrive files may become inaccessible or forgotten about, creating a risk of lost data. Uh, SharePoint, on the other hand, is a centralized location um, for all of this data um, and ensures that files will remain accessible to the right people at the right time. Uh, SharePoint allows for better organization with team sites and document libraries, unlike OneDrive, which is, is just really a list of files and folders. SharePoint provides structured access, making it easier uh, for teams to manage and collaborate on documents. Additionally, SharePoint integrates more deeply with the Microsoft 365 tools, providing version control, advanced permissions, automated workflows, uh, seamless syncing with teams, making it a, just a better choice company-wide for collaboration. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, subscribe, and more for corporate tech tips. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Thanks.